People have been doing the low carb thing for a long time. So when the ketogenic diet became a more popular thing in recent years, the market responded by offering a bunch of products that all claim the same thing low net carbs. And one of the ways that food scientists can pull that off is by using carbohydrates in the form of fiber, a nutrient that doesn't get digested by your body so it doesn't count towards your daily calories. It also makes for some healthier poops. So, you know, there's that. But how do you stuff that much fiber, sometimes the same amount as multiple servings of fruits and vegetables, into such a small product? And more importantly, what's it doing inside of our bodies? Okay, so big picture. Fiber is good for you. It has all kinds of health benefits and it usually comes from fruits and vegetables. So overall, it gets a thumbs up from nutrition experts. But what makes fiber so unique is how it can't be digested by the body. And since it can't be metabolized, it doesn't count towards net carbohydrates. So a few decades ago, when people started getting on that low carb trend, food scientists got to work. At first, companies would use foods like dates and figs to bind the product together, which added a little bit of fiber. You could get four or five grams of fiber into a 50 gram bar, which is reasonable. It's what you'd expect if you ate the ingredients raw. And as the demand for low carb snacks grew, companies started using IMOs, or isomaltooligosaccharides, which brought the net carbs down, but it tastes like chalk and urine. IMOs were really popular in the industry for a number of years, but consumers started to demand something that actually tasted, you know, good for a change. So food scientists cooked up soluble corn fiber, or SCF, and it was a good move. The products got a better texture to them, and they finally didn't taste like licking the inside of a gas station bathroom. But you'll notice that the products that use SCF have a lot of fiber in them, like up to 17 grams of fiber. That's a lot. And while it's a shocking quantity, the quality actually does have a lot of the same benefits as traditional fiber. A handful of animal and human studies saw that corn fiber had a good glucose and insulin response, which is good news for diabetics, especially if this ingredient was gonna be used in low sugar foods. And in multiple studies, corn fiber had a lower glycemic response than straight glucose. It was a slow bump in blood sugar instead of a big spike. SCF helps with digestive health as well. In the few randomized clinical trials that have been performed, participants who supplemented with about 20 grams of soluble corn fiber a day did have bulkier poops. So while its effects on glucose control and gastrointestinal health are similar to traditional fiber, how soluble corn fiber works in the body isn't quite the same. After passing through the small intestine, SCF is fermented by your microbiome, the bacteria living in your large intestine. They turn the substance into energy for themselves and leave behind some short-chain fatty acids like butyrate, which have their own health benefits. And according to a 2012 study, SCF actually can help increase the amount of helpful bacteria in your gut. So not only is it a fiber supplement, but it's also a potential prebiotic. And none of that is a bad thing, but I'm still not totally sold. Like, what are the drawbacks? Why aren't we all supplementing with soluble corn fiber food products? And the answer is exactly that. It's a food product, not, you know, food. One of fiber's big benefits is that it's supposed to help you feel fuller for longer. So researchers from the University of Minnesota put it to the test. In their study, they got together 20 fasted college kids and gave them breakfast. Either a regular muffin or a muffin with 25 grams of fiber, an entire day's recommended value. The subjects reported no difference in their levels of fullness when comparing the types of muffins. And that's really not surprising. Not because of some unique property of soluble corn fiber, but just because of the nature of being full. You need to eat a big filling salad to get 25 grams of fiber. By sheer volume alone, you're gonna be full after that. But to get the same amount of fiber from soluble corn fiber, you're nibbling on maybe a protein bar and a half. It might not follow the low carb trend that those dieters are after, but I know that I'm gonna get sick of those bars way faster than I'm gonna get sick of salads. So for bulkier poops and a low glycemic index, this stuff checks out. But remember, there are still so many more benefits of food source fiber than just those two things. Benefits that we haven't even looked at yet in soluble corn fiber. So for now, I think I'm gonna stick with salad. Well, that does it for this video. If you learned something today, would you mind subscribing to my channel and leaving a like on the video? And if you would, would you share this video with somebody who's either trying to do the low carb thing or has done it in the past? I really appreciate it. It helps the channel get out to more people. So otherwise, have fun, be good, and I will see you next time.